dust spots all over your sensor. It is an absolute pain for photographers. But in this video, I'm gonna share with you a few simple techniques to keep your sensor nice and clean so you don't have to worry about cleaning up those annoying dust spots in post-production. Now I need a little bit of feedback from you guys. I'm going away for a month doing some landscape photography in New Zealand's beautiful North Island and I'm considering vlogging the whole thing using my phone. So this video on how to clean your camera's sensor is all shot on my smartphone. So please tell me, is the quality okay for a bit of vlogging? How's the sound? Just let me know in the comments, I'd really appreciate it. But now I'm gonna share with you how you can save yourself a lot of money by cleaning your own camera sensor yourself. And believe me, it's really not as difficult as you might think it is. In this video, I'm gonna share with you three techniques that we can use to actually get our photos free from those horrible little dust spots. They tend to show up mostly in the sky and I've recently gone and shot a whole series of architectural images for a very high-end client and I'm spending a long time retouching out little dust spots that have appeared in the sky even though I thought my sensor was nice and clean before I shot the job. So two of the techniques that I've got for you involve actually cleaning the sensor itself and the third technique is in post-production and if you haven't actually got a nice clean sensor and you come back with dust spots, what do you do then? So we'll cover all of those scenarios. So first things first, you want to make sure that you've got a fully charged battery in your camera because we're going to lock the mirror up and you don't want to run out of battery while the mirror's up. So the first thing you want to do is take a reference photo. And this is really easy to do. Uh, turn your camera on, you're basically going to put your lens focus to infinity, uh, your ISO down nice and low, something like 100 be perfect, but anywhere around there. We're gonna set the camera to manual mode, and then what we can do is just go to as high a f-stop as your lens will allow. So in my case, I'm changing this up to f22, and then I'm gonna have the shutter open for long enough that we can get a nice bright image that's gonna allow us to see all the dust spots that are on the sensor. So the next thing we need is a clear wall to photograph against. So I'm gonna use this wall just behind me here and show you what I do. So I'm gonna put my camera at 16 millimeters and nice and close, we've focused it on infinity and the camera's meter is saying that I need to be open for half a second. So my settings here, F22, ISO 100 and we're at half a second. When I take the photo, I'm just moving the camera around. So if there's any light spots on the wall like here, or you catch the edge of something, um, because you're moving the camera around so quickly, that just goes into a blur and you end up with a nice, evenly exposed photograph where you can start to view if you've got any dust spots. Here you can see we've actually got quite a large dust smear here on my actual sensor. Other than that, it's pretty clean to be honest because I actually cleaned it not too long ago, but we want to get rid of that. So I'm going to show you the two techniques that we can use. Firstly, a dry clean, and if that doesn't get rid of it, then we're going to go on to a wet clean. So let me show you how to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is take our lens off. So for my camera, I just hold that down and twist it around. Now you don't want to have this open and exposed to the air for too long. Um, so on the back of my camera, I can go into my menu system and through there I have lock mirror up for cleaning. Start, I press OK and when I press the shutter, the mirror will go up. So let me show you the mirror going up. Now we can see our sensor and that's exposed for cleaning. Ideally you want to be doing this in a dust free environment so you don't want to be doing this out in the field because that's actually how you end up with a lot of dust in there in the first place. It's swapping lenses when you're on location doing your photo shoots. Ideally you want to be dealing with this in good light as well. So I'm right by the window and I'll actually get like really close up here when I'm doing this just to see if I can actually see any dust particles. Um, and they're not they're actually normally pretty easy to see if your eyes, <laughs> eyes are good. So let's do a dry clean. The way I would recommend doing this is you can use a blower and just get in there and just, if you see some dust, just gently blow away the dust. Um, but my preferred method for this is to use this, which is an Arctic butterfly. I've had this for years, melted the case at some point, I don't know how I did that. Um, but it's still going strong. The idea of this is, when we turn it on, this is actually whizzing around really fast, and the reason it's doing that is actually building up static electricity on the end of this brush. We've got a little LED light here, which will help me see, and as I come in here, I'm actually just gonna wipe across the sensor really gently. And then in between, I'll give that another whiz. 
There you go again. Now there's no reason that you need to be too concerned. As long as you're being careful, um, the sensor itself is actually protected uh, by a, a filter or a series of little filters that deal with different things before the light actually gets to the sensor. And that's the actual part that you're cleaning, not the sensor itself. So while I recommend taking the utmost care, these things are actually more resilient than you probably think. So when we've done that, we just turn it off, put our lens back on, and we take another test photo. So my settings are the same. I'm on focus to infinity, take that shot, and now I'll do a quick comparison. I will bring this up for you guys on the computer so that you can see what I'm looking at, but I don't download the photos in between and do a comparison and all of that. It's easy enough just to zoom in on the back and see what you're dealing with. So you can see here that I'm zooming in. Uh, normally you'll find the dust around the edges of your frame and I'm actually looking pretty good here. So that dry clean's done a pretty good job in this example, but I will still show you the wet clean method because that is the best method for making sure that your sensor is perfectly clean and free of dust. Okay, so I'm finished with the Arctic Butterfly. These guys don't sponsor me or anything like that, um, but it's a tool that I've been using for many years and I've cleaned countless sensors. Um, if you're like me, like I was getting fed up with just paying money, uh, like quite a bit of money for people to clean my sensor for me. When I found out how easy it was to do myself, I was like, oh, why have I not been do doing this sooner? So I've been doing this for years now and this just keeps going. And normally, as you saw with that clean adjusted, that's enough to get the sensor clean, which is great. But if you want to take it the next step, which I do, because I'm actually going away for a month of landscape photography, and I want to make sure that my sensor is nice and clean before I go. So what you need to do is get yourself uh, some of these swabs. Again, I've got a link in the description so you guys can get them. You want to get the right size for your sensor. If you're dealing with a full frame camera, full frame sensor, make sure you get the full frame swabs. If you've got an APS, APS-C sensor, make sure you get the smaller ones, etc. Get the right ones for your camera. So we're going to perform the same function that we did before, which is turn the camera on, going to lock the mirror up, start. That's the sequence I go through. It may be different on your camera, but basically you want to make sure that mirror is up. Once we've got access to our sensor in the background, what we're going to do is just get ourselves just a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. The kits that I'm linking to in the description, they actually come with um, a little kind of pipette thing or something for distributing the drops onto here. You don't want to oversaturate this. I've made that mistake before where you, like two drops is all you need. If you make this too wet, you're going to end up just keep smearing the alcohol over the sensor, which you don't want. So we are going to put the swab in. We're going to press down gently on the sensor and just move from left to right and then we're going to do the same thing the other way and that should have given our sensor a really nice clean I'm going to put this back on here very gently and I'm going to take one more test shot so that's after our wet clean and I'm pretty confident that that's going to be in really tip-top shape I can't see any dust on there whatsoever so there you have it guys, two really simple techniques to clean your sensor. Start with a dry clean, if that doesn't work, move on to the wet clean. And if for whatever reason you've managed to get dust on there while you've been out on a shoot, or you've got photos that you've already got that have heaps of dust all over them, let's go into Lightroom and Photoshop and I'll show you a couple of ways that you can clean them up relatively easily, but it's much better to do it before you even go on the shoot. So that's the best approach, clean the camera sensor before you even go out on a photo shoot. But changing lenses out in the field, we know that you can introduce new dust in and onto that sensor. So what do you do in that situation? Well, I'll share with you how you can fix it up in Lightroom and also in Photoshop. Let's start with Lightroom. These are the photos that I just took before just to assess whether or not there's any dust on my sensor or not. And at this magnification, you can't really see whether there is or there isn't. You can zoom in, so you can press Z, and now around the bottom, you can start to see 
just some slight dust markings here and here which we could retouch in a photo if we wanted to. Now I normally find that the dust spots down the bottom of the frame are really not quite as visible as what's in the top because often uh, the dust spots show up in the sky area. But anyway, if you want to see these more clearly, here's a really quick technique for you. So come up to the top right here and go to the spot removal tool or you can just press Q. And once you've got that tool active, down here we have this little tick box, check box, visualize spots. If we tick it, and now we've got a very um, strongly enhanced version of this shot that we took. And if I turn that off and on again, off and on, all these little white dots are showing you exactly where those dust spots are. So you could clone, um, at, clone these out in an actual photograph just by clicking and then resampling a different area and you could get rid of them that way but you really don't want to have to be dealing with that so the best method is to actually clean it as I showed you and then you end up with a sensor like this one which is actually just clean so this is the actual photo visualize spots there's nothing really there whereas prior to that we've got some nasty dust going on so let's have a look at how this would work in Photoshop. Like I say, more often than not, you'll see the dust spots appearing in the sky. And just at a quick glance, I can see one just here to the right of the frame, and looks like there's one up here. But they're not always that easy to see. Uh, the tool you'll use to fix them, ideally, would be the spot healing brush tool. And it's normally just a case of making sure that your, uh, your brush size is big enough to cover it. So you can use the bracket keys to expand or contract the size of that brush, which I've done there, and one click will fix that up, and that's gone. But if I undo that, if you want a better way to actually see those dust spots, what I recommend you do is actually create a levels, sorry, a curves layer just above, and we're gonna create a crazy curve. We're gonna take it up and down, and straight away, you see, see these spots starting to show up there, but you can keep taking that further, and you can basically just create yourself a wonky donkey up and down, a highly undulating curve. So now it's really easy to see where these uh, little dust spots, these outliers are, and then we can come in and just use that tool that we had before, which is the spot healing brush tool, and simply click once on each of those dots, the dust spots, and they are gone. And it was much better, as I said before, to actually get rid of these on your sensor, but sometimes uh, some things slip through the net. And so now looking at that sky, I can tell that we are pretty good to go. We've got rid of all of those dust spots. So if I zoom out and turn this curves layer off again, we know that this image would be good to go to print and we don't have any dust spots. Well, there you go, guys. There's a couple of methods that you can use in post-production, either in Lightroom or Photoshop, to clean up those little dust ghosts that you see on your photos normally appearing in the sky. But as I recommended originally, clean your sensor before you go out on a shoot, and it's going to save you a whole heap of time in post-production. If you want to get hold of any of that gear, I've got some Amazon links below uh, that will take you straight there, and it's probably worth the investment of whatever you're getting hold of, because I know for a fact that when I was cleaning my own sensor, it used to cost me about $85 each time, and this is going back quite a few years. So save yourself a lot of money over the long run and learn how to do it yourself. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If this has been helpful to you, please subscribe to the channel and also give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.